Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are thinking about getting a Crested Gecko then this video is for you because I'm going to be telling you guys everything that you need so a shopping list in a way of things that you need to have before getting a Crested Gecko. If you currently own a Crested Gecko and you don't have some of these things I would highly suggest that you get them. I will explain in the video why you need each thing and why it's important to a Crested Gecko's health. So let's go ahead and get started. I decided I was going to write everything down for you guys. I realized as I was editing that I did not put a disclaimer on this video. Just so you guys know, this video is not meant to be any kind of care guide. There are some tips and tricks in this video, but if you guys are interested in any kind of care guides, tips, um, enclosure ideas, you guys can check the description box or the comment section for a playlist that has all my Crested Gecko related videos in one playlist. The first thing that you're going to need is an enclosure. And with every enclosure, you're going to need some kind of clutter, decoration, something to make the animal feel very safe. You're going to need some kind of hide, foliage, perching platform, and just a lot of clutter or foliage inside the enclosure. You're going to need a scale. You're also going to need some meal replacement powder, which is what Crested Geckos eat. I'll put on the screen um, where you guys can get all the different foods that are really good for Crested Geckos. Um, meal replacement powders. Of course, you're going to need to get crickets. And along with any insects that you get, you're going to need to get some kind of container for those and a gut load for the insects. Um, because crickets and insects in themselves aren't nutritious enough for an animal unless you gut load them. You're going to need a thermometer and a hygrometer, and you're also going to need calcium and multivitamin powders to dust occasionally on the insects that you do get. You're going to need some kind of misting system to help keep humidity up, so one thing that I like to use is just a regular, I believe it's a plant sprayer that I got from Walmart for like five bucks. Um, they also sell them at the pet stores, but mine, like I said, was $5. I think the ones at the pet stores are like $15, which is ridiculous. So if you guys just want to go to like Walmart and get something, or you can just use like an old-fashioned spray bottle. They also have automatic misters. I don't currently own an automatic mister, but I would love to get one. They... They basically take the work out of misting. Obviously, you have to configure them to suit the animal that it's going to be misting. You will also need some sort of substrate. Um, certain things that you could use for substrate would be paper towel, coconut fiber husk. I would not recommend the reptile carpet. That is really hard to clean. It actually harbors bacteria, so I definitely would not recommend using any kind of reptile carpet, anything carpet related. Um, in with any kind of animal, any kind of reptile, because like I said, they do harbor bacteria. They're very hard to clean. You can't wash them with regular detergents and things like that, so they don't actually get cleaned. I personally use paper towel, and I love it. I can monitor where their poops. I can see if they're pooping. All that jazz, I can see if they're healthy just from their poops. So I would definitely recommend paper towel, but some people also do use coconut fiber. Just make sure when you do use coconut fiber, it's not completely dry because coconut fiber can actually cause respiratory infections and things like that. If it's really, really dry and dusty, it is a very dusty product. So just make sure that it's not super dry and make sure that it's not super wet as well. Humidity will be too high, but crested geckos, of course, they like a little bit higher humidity. Some of you may need to have some sort of heat source. Now, I personally do not need a heat source because my house stays between 72 and 80 degrees, so that's totally fine. I don't need any kind of heating source, but like I said, some of you might need it. So if you do, you can always use a heat pad or like a ceramic heat emitter. If you do get those though, you do need a thermostat. Um, if your house is above 80 degrees, you really should not get a crested gecko unless you can efficiently cool that area down. Crested gecko should not be above 80 degrees. It is lethal. It will kill them. If it is a constant temperature of 80 degrees, it will kill them. So just be very careful of that. Um, if your house is below 72 degrees, I would suggest getting some sort of heat source. Um, it, but it is okay for temperatures to fluctuate. That is one thing that I don't, I don't think people really understand is it's okay if the temperature fluctuates a little bit. For most reptiles, there is supposed to be a nighttime drop. Um, so a drop in temperature. Uh, my crested geckos, I believe my temperature drops around 68 degrees and it hovers between that and 72. So at nighttime is where it hovers. 
So that's totally fine. As long as it warms up during the day, you're totally fine. But just keep in mind during the day, it really should be around 72 to 80 degrees. Um, so like I said, you can use a ceramic heat emitter or a heat pad to help warm that surrounding area. Just make sure that you have a thermostat because those can get really, really hot and they can actually start fire if they aren't on a thermostat. When it comes to the enclosure for a Crested Gecko, you want to make sure that you do have some areas for them to perch on. I like to use dowel rods and I also like to use egg crates as more of a perching item. The Crested Geckos really enjoy to actually get inside the holes of the egg crates and just hang out there. They seem to really enjoy that. It's almost like a hide, but it's also a perch and they can also jump from it. It's very sturdy. You can just throw them out and discard them when they get soiled. So they're really nice to have. Um, I also use any kind of paper towel rolls, but I do seal the ends off. Keep that in mind. If you are going to be using paper towel rolls or cardboard, um, what are they, toilet rolls, make sure that you're sealing the ends off with some kind of tape or something like that because they actually, I've heard stories, I've never had it happen, but I've heard stories of people's crusty geckos getting lodged in there. I don't know, they'd have to be pretty big crusty geckos to get lodged and stuck, but I'm not willing to risk it, so I always seal up the holes just to be extra safe, but they are a really good perch. They do hold up pretty well, especially if you'd use paper towel instead of toilet paper rolls. Earlier, I mentioned you guys needing to have a scale to weigh your crested geckos. This is very important. You should have a scale if you own snakes, any kind of reptile at all, to be able to monitor their weight. Say, if, say you have a crested gecko. Your crested gecko stops eating and you want to monitor its weight and you don't have a scale, you don't have a scale. You need a scale just in case if the animal stops eating so you can track their weight, make sure that they aren't losing weight, that they're actually gaining if they're supposed to be gaining. Make sure they're maintaining their current weight. Scales are just really good to have around. Now keep in mind, if you do get a scale, you want to get a scale that measures in grams. With reptiles, that's what you measure in is grams. Something else that I don't think a lot of people think about is the fact that they need to have some sort of temporary housing. So when you're cleaning out your crested gecko's enclosure you can put this animal in a safe spot that it can hang out in for a little while while you are cleaning you don't want to have chemicals around your crested geckos that sort of thing um, and also if you're going to be taking it to the vet um, animals can get sick at any point in their lifetime from for whatever reason they can um, and you need to have some sort of temporary housing to transport the animal personally I use deli cups when I clean out my crested geckos, normally I will put them inside a deli cup or inside a plastic shoe box, something of that nature that they can just hang out in, I can put a lid on, and I know that they're going to be there when I come back from cleaning their enclosure. That would be the worst thing ever if I like put my gecko somewhere and I came back and they weren't there. So just make sure you guys have some sort of temporary housing, something to keep them in while you are cleaning or when you take them to the vet, anything of that nature, you really should have a temporary enclosure. Now, onto the cleaning side of things. I do get this question a lot for what do I use to clean or what can you use to clean your Crested Gecko's enclosures or your reptiles enclosures in general. Some of the things that you can use are chlorhexidine solution, bleach, or vinegar. Bleach does kill off some bacteria that chlorhexidine solution cannot. So I do make sure I use that, but I don't use it as an everyday care, everyday cleaning solution. I do use my chlorhexidine solution, like I said earlier, and I love it. It is an animal safe product. All you have to do is you buy the concentrated form of it and mix it with water. I can't remember the percentage of water, like the ratios, but um, it's always on the bottles. It is what veterinarians use. I highly recommend it to anyone. All you have to do is spray down an enclosure and wipe the enclosure out. Now that's for a quick clean. That's my weekly cleans. Like I said, I will use bleach to do more of a deep clean to really clean everything out, but chlorhexidine solution does amazing. Now, since this is a before you buy a Crested Gecko video, things that you should have ready before you do buy an animal, this, this rule goes for any animal at all. If you're planning on buying an animal, you need to make sure that you have the funds to put back veterinarian money care into a separate fund just in case if that animal gets sick. 
I hope that makes sense. So every, every paycheck you're pulling money out to put aside for this animal just in case if it gets sick. And you need to make sure that you can continue to do that for that animal's lifetime. Um, I'm not going to get into what to think about before buying an animal in this video because I want that to be a separate video. But you guys really should think before buying an animal and if it doesn't fit your lifestyle and what you can care for for the next 20 plus years, however long the animal lives, you really need to reevaluate if you should get that animal or not. There are some animals that don't live as long. So that's all I'm going to say in this video for that part. Just make sure that you do have the means and you will have the means 20 years from now. I do believe that was everything that I've had going around in my mind. I think if I did miss anything, make sure you guys leave down in the comments what I missed. If you guys ever have any questions about crested geckos or any species of animal that I currently own, you guys are always welcome to shoot me a message on my social media at Kinsey Lynn W. It's basically that for everything, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. So if you guys ever have any questions, make sure you guys come and shoot me a message or you guys can follow the link down below to my website and shoot me a message from there. I'm always willing to help you guys. I actually really enjoy it when I get messages from you guys to help you. As always, I am not a vet. If you guys think there's something medically wrong with your animal, of course I cannot diagnose that. I'm not a vet. So make sure you guys are going to the vet when you do feel the, the need to. But if you guys have any questions at all, make sure you leave them down in the comments or ask me on social media. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.